If you were to think about it, science fiction has existed for as long as humans have been able to talk to each other. As an overall genre, it's one of my favorites because it allows the imagination to go absolutely wild. One feature of science fiction that has been hugely popular is the idea of force fields. Force fields, energy shields, deflector shield, whatever you may call it, the idea of a protective barrier that prevents objects from passing through it has become a huge part of the genre. Unfortunately for us, this technology has stayed in the realm of science fiction and is yet to manifest itself into reality. But that might actually change soon. Before we dive into this topic, we need to give a rough definition of what a force field is. This isn't anything official, just some common themes from a vast array of examples. We're going to assume that our force field is deployable on command, has almost no mass, and doesn't allow objects or energy to pass through it. Now that we've got a rough definition, let's dive into the world of plasma. It's a common misconception that the sun is on fire, when in reality, it's just made of plasma. Basically, when any regular matter gets really, really hot, the electrons in these atoms are ripped away, leaving only the nucleus behind. This causes the creation of free electrons and positive ions in somewhat of a nuclear soup called plasma. But wait, there's a problem. Since matter must be heated to this extreme temperature, all the molecules in our nuclear soup need to be moving super fast, meaning if it were to stay in places, say, an empty region of space, it would dissipate almost instantly, making the use for our force field on Earth almost impossible. <laughs> Stars cheat this aspect of plasma by being really big. The immense pressure from the entire star squeezing down on it makes nuclear fusion happen. But since we aren't operating on the scale of stars yet, we need a way to contain this plasma in its superheated state if we're ever to hope to use one on Earth. Luckily, in our chemical soup, there are tons of electrons, meaning plasma can conduct electricity. This opens up an opportunity for us to utilize electromagnetism. Electromagnetism allows for our plasma to be influenced by an electromagnetic field. This means, with enough power, we can shape our plasma into a thin plane. This thin plane was achieved in 1995, and it's called a plasma window. When the plasma is heated to 12,000 degrees, Fahrenheit, it was able to separate air from a vacuum, which is extremely important. And when plasma is heated to even higher temperatures, it becomes impermeable plasma, something of which nothing can pass through. This is very good, and it looks like we're right on our way to making our force field work, right? The problem with this method is that it requires a humongous amount of power to create and contain them. We currently have the ability to reach these incredible temperatures, but this process uses way too much energy for any kind of practical use. So currently, the largest plasma window that we're able to create and contain is only about 3 feet tall and 1 foot wide. But as technology improves, we will get bigger and better results. But in the meantime, we're going to go look at some other technology that we're going to need to create our force field. <laughs> When you think about a force field and how strong it should be, force fields are often portrayed as being completely indestructible. This does present some problems for just using our plasma window for our force field, and that's not even my opinion. Michio Kaku thinks that plasma windows alone won't live up to what we call a force field, but if we were to add a few extra layers of technology, then we would have something much closer to resembling what we would call a force field. Kaku thinks that if we were able to make an effective and practical force field, we would need an ultra powerful plasma window that would be able to vaporize anything that it touches. This would be followed by an intense array of high powered lasers to destroy anything that got through it. Currently, the most powerful laser in the world is being developed by the US Army, and this thing is a beast, firing at 1 terawatt, 200 famato second long burst of energy. For context, 1 terawatt is 1 trillion watts while one famato second is equivalent to one quadrillionth of a second. With a laser this powerful, it would easily be able to fry anything that gets through our plasma window. And finally, we have our third layer of our force field, a layer of carbon nanotubes. This layer would only be one atom thick, yet it would be 100 times stronger than steel. This is because the carbon-carbon covalent bond in each molecule is incredibly hard to break since there are a single chain of these on a two-dimensional plane rather than a three-dimensional one. This is why diamonds are so hard to break since there are 3D matrix of carbon-carbon bonds. Carbon nanotubes are actually quite amazing and honestly deserve a video of their own. 
but in the meantime, we're just going to stick the mod to our force field for our final layer. Our force field so far is coming along really well, but there's still one major issue. We specified earlier in our definition that it would be able to block direct energy. Without this, we would be vulnerable to things like high-powered lasers and deadly solar radiation if we're using it in space. One way to fix this is with a technology called photochromatics. This is done by darkening a specific area of our force field so that it's able to absorb the energy or even deflect it. One example of this in action is with photochromatic sunglasses which darken when exposed to ultraviolet radiation. And when it's not being exposed, it returns back to normal. But I'm not going to bore anyone with the details of this. But needless to say, this technology is in its infancy and it is nowhere near what we need it to be for our force field. But for right now, we're going to assume that someone in the future is able to solve this issue and will now be able to block direct energy. So now we've got our thin, indestructible, and easily shapeable force field up and running. What can it be used for exactly? Well, you might think that this would only be useful for the military. However, the fact that we now have an easily manipulable, indestructible barrier that separates air from a vacuum it opens up a huge range of possibilities. For example, all roads, houses, bridges, and pretty much anything could be replaced by our force field. Brick, concrete, and sand, and all other building materials would see a sharp drop in price as people would use our force field to build higher and higher at essentially the snap of a finger. A force field deployed on the moon or Mars would make an indestructible barrier from the vacuum of outer space, and even shield citizens of these planets from asteroids and deadly solar radiation. Hopping back to Earth, it would even be possible possible to build underwater skyscrapers in cities at the ocean floor, all protected by our force field. Now, obviously, this would require a ton of advancements in all kinds of different fields, from plasma to lasers to carbon nanotubes, but all have to become much cheaper and more powerful if they're ever to be used practically. Not to mention, all this would require an ungodly amount of energy that we're simply not capable of producing. However, some solutions such as nuclear fusion do show that it could happen within our lifetime. In fact, Michal Kaku thinks that force fields are a type 1 impossibility, meaning that they're achievable within the next 100 years. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that's impossible. Maybe. Humans are good at doing so-called impossible things. Plus, say if one of you was able to come up with a practical solution to one of these issues, well then, you'd be living a very comfortable life afterwards.